What's up, people? Welcome back to Health Sparks, featuring the brightest entrepreneurs and innovations from the health and technology arena. I am Michael Walsh, your host. Good to be back. It's been about three weeks since we've uh, had a show come out. It's been an incredibly busy last couple weeks. Uh, some news from my end. My digital health startup, Caraloop, was accepted into the Health Wildcatters Accelerator program right here in Dallas, Texas. It's a new program. It's their first year of doing it, but it's the, the sister program, I guess, is the best way to explain it. It's a bit of a spinoff from the Tech Wildcatters Accelerator Program, which is a Forbes top 10 ranked accelerator. They've, they've been kicking it for like three or four years now, I think. They've had some 50 startups come out of that program and tons of recognition along with it. So huge news for Caraloop, but uh, yeah, very busy the last few weeks. But uh, going to spend the next 12 weeks, actually, we've been working this out with, with Health Wildcatters. Uh, we're going to bring you the stories of every single startup that got into the program. Uh, tons of incredible products that are going to be coming out to the market here very soon, um, built by incredible entrepreneurs. So their stories are extremely compelling, uh, and I thought it'd be great to be able to share their stories with all of you. So the next 12 weeks, yeah, tons of, uh, tons of new, new episodes coming out with all the startups that are part of this program. So really looking forward to sharing that. Be sure to subscribe to the show. Uh, go to healthsparks.com forward slash subscribe or uh, it's, it should be right here if you're looking on the episode page right up above. You can get signed up uh, and you'll get the content every Tuesday. Uh, actually, I gotta decide. I'm not sure if it's gonna be Tuesday anymore. We'll see, but uh, whatever day I post it, it'll come straight to your mailbox and you can check it out. So uh, on today's show, we got Nate Sikander. He's uh, the founder of a company called Kinesio Connect, incredible technology using the Microsoft Xbox, Con Xbox Connect to uh, help with uh, physical therapy, making sure you're doing your exercises correct, making sure you're compliant. Uh, so solving that huge issue with all the PT patients out there and helping all the, the PTs themselves uh, manage their patients. So very excited to welcome him to the show and uh, wanted to just throw out a couple quick shout outs. First and foremost, of course, to Health Wildcatters. Thank you for letting us do this. Um, doing every single episode right here live with the, the founders of each company. So uh, very grateful to them for letting me do this and share all these great stories. Hoping that some of you were able to go check the products out and that uh, they benefit you in some way. So thank you, Health Wildcatters. Uh, one last quick reminder before we get started with Nick. We're also on iTunes and Stitcher Radio as well. So if you'd like to listen to some of, that, uh, some of these podcasts, some of these shows on iTunes or on Stitcher, be sure to check us out and follow us. And you can get all the good stuff we post each week. We appreciate it. So without further ado, let's get started. Nick Sikander, the founder of Kinesio Connect. Everybody, today on Health Sparks, I'm joined by Nick Sikander. He's the founder and CEO of Synapse Labs. It's a mobile health application development company here in Dallas. Uh, he's a scientist by education, but an entrepreneur by passion. He's previously worked as a sales engineer in enterprise healthcare. He's a huge advocate for mobile health. Uh, Nick works to build the best applications focused on healthcare. Uh, a true visionary with technical chops, he is the key visionary to the success of the company we're talking about today, Kinesio Connect. So, Nate, welcome to the show, my man. How are you? Good, man. Thanks. Glad, you're glad to be here. So, again, you're part of the Health Wildcatter Accelerator Program here in Dallas. We're going to be going through this the next 12, 10, 12 weeks with all the startups. So, tell us a little bit about Kinesio Connect and, I guess, how in the world you came up with this idea. Yeah, so uh, initially we uh, were working with a chiropractor and discussing how range of motions are calculated on initial office visits. And after hearing how that process takes place, uh, we were just like, wow, there's no real like scientific merit behind it. It's just, you know, an experience and, and you know, a visual thing. So we developed uh, Kinesio Connect initially to be a range of motion assessment tool. And um, we, we completed that, we got very accurate results and very quick results, and we decided let's take this a step further and, and focus on a huge area that needs a lot of attention, and that's the, the PT market. And so we uh, then in turn developed Kinesio Connect to have a physical therapy uh, monitoring feedback aspect to it. So just talking a little bit about just what it is, it actually when we say Kinesio Connect, it's part of the Connect system for Xbox, right? Correct. So not necessarily Xbox, but Microsoft. So That's the right. Connect, okay. The Connect sensor 
is what we're utilizing to do the skeletal tracking and do the real-time monitoring. So we have we built an application that utilizes that sensor's capabilities. So walk us through like a use case for this. Just you know, who is going to use this? Is it going to be just the PTs, or are we going to try and sell this to the patients themselves, like to use at home, or you know? So what? Who's going to use this thing? Yeah. So our business model is still evolving, but our initial thought is to sell it to the physical therapy practices. Um, a really good use case is uh, anyone that goes to physical therapy for three, four, five, six months, you know, after about three weeks, they're doing the same exercises, um, maybe in different uh, schedules or on, on different intensities, but for the most part, they're doing the exact same exercises and they're just having a physical therapist with them, you know, to kind of shoot the breeze and talk about how the Rangers are doing. And so there's no real intrinsic benefit there. Insurance is still billed for that person. So we want to kind of remove that from the equation and allow people who have shown that they understand the exercises they're supposed to do and can do these almost autonomously. And so using our application, their stations and physical therapy offices are set up and then they can you know, go through the exercises that their physical therapist has prescribed or their orthopedic surgeon has prescribed, do them uh, without a physical therapist, but still get that real-time feedback, still get that monitoring, and then still have all that information sent to your doctor, to your physical therapist to show, hey, this guy's doing exercises properly, and he's doing them you know, in regular schedules. So is the connect, like, is it almost like a game where it's scoring me as I do it? Like, you know, hey, I didn't do it quite this way the right way, so I get negative points or something? <laughs> we're, we're looking at the gamification aspect for the, when we're bringing it over to the consumer side, but it does give you real feedback. Feedback. So, for example, if you're not squatting low enough for something, um, there will be like a red indicator saying, you know, you need hey, to drop get down to here. Amount, you know, degrees more, things like that. So, cool. Uh, but gamification is definitely something that we're exploring when we bring it to the more consumer driven side. So, why connect? Like, you know, there's Wii's out there too that does kind of that's got similar technology that, you know, based on motion and things like that. So, Correct. what led you there? So, uh, to touch on the Wii, the Wii's phenomenal, I love it, I think it's a, uh, it's a great uh, gaming thing, but the problem with the Wii, if I'm supposed to be doing an arm exercise and then a corresponding leg movement with the same thing, the Wii doesn't capture that. The Wii captures what I'm doing with the controller in my hand. True. Um, you know, so that is limited and that can be tricked. Um, with the Kinect, it actually has a skeletal tracker, so it's seeing my arms, my legs, and things, and I can move them independently, and things are still captured. And so that's why the Kinect just seemed a logical choice. And with um, our experience in the Microsoft realm, um, C Sharp being the, the programming language used for the Kinect, it just seemed like a logical trend. And uh, we're really excited to get our hands on the new Kinect one when it comes out uh, here shortly. How large of a market are we talking? Like when we talk Connect versus Nintendo Wii, I mean, what's I have no idea of the, the numbers out there. Like how many people are using each? Yes, yeah, so I don't know the numbers on the Wii. Uh, I know they're, they're pretty high, uh, but the Connect itself has, uh, not Xbox, but the Connect itself has over 80 million uh, units that have been sold. Mostly consumer driven, I would imagine. Mostly consumer driven, and I think that's where a lot of our advantage comes in is that we are focused on the clinical side of things. And then eventually we might translate that into a consumer driven side, but we want to have the clinical data to back up what we're trying to do in the consumer market. I'm trying to think about what that meeting between you and a PT would sound like. You know, hey, you walk in there and you got to tell them they got to go buy an Xbox and a Kinect. And I mean, are they excited about that? Yeah, I think, you know, it's. Because, like, you're right, it's new to them, probably. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what it is. You know, I think when people think of Connect, they automatically think, you know, dancing games and <laughs> playing tennis and things dance, like dance that. Dance, dance revolution. Yeah, um, but I think there's, there's a lot more than that, and showing them the, uh, the brevity of what's capable is, you know, really exciting. And, you know, having that, you know, be a supplement to them so they can see new patients they can really focus on patients that need that extra help while the patients that get their physical therapy can do this on their own. So it's you know a win-win for them. They're still getting their people happier, healthier, faster, and they're still catering and nurturing those people that still need that additional support in the early stages of the PT. So what are some of the other options out there right now? Like, I mean, we're trying to, like you said, sort of gamify the concept of physical therapy. Is there anything else out there like this through the connector of the Wii that you know, the PTs are using, or is there, are there mobile applications that people are using? 
Yeah, so there's there's a few things out there. I mean, obviously, We Fit um, is a popular fitness exercise uh, program developed for the We using the We Balance Board. But as far as specific to physical therapy, um, nothing really that exists on the clinical side that provides that clinical level feedback. There's a few uh, programs out there that are also utilizing the Connect, but they're completely consumer driven. Sure. Um, and then, you know, other things out there, there's range of motion assessment tools, but you know, some of those are really expensive, really cumbersome, and you know, can take a lot of time to do things uh, appropriately. So why do you feel, I mean, I don't know much about this, but why do you personally feel like gaming is gonna be just such a huge thing in healthcare as we go here? I think, you know, the reason gaming in general is so popular is the the reward system. You know, I think humans by nature like someone to tell them, hey, that shirt looks good on you, or, you know, hey, you've been losing weight, or, you know, anything that, you know, makes them feel good about themselves, and that's what gaming does. And it also gives, brings out that competitive nature in everyone. You know, if you're... If your 10 year old son, you know, can do some exercises and get, you know, 100 million points, you know, you're like, I can do that too. You know, he's 10, I can do that. So it brings out that, that spirited uh, competition in people and, you know, in, entices them to want to do better and do more. Do you have, I mean, have you tested any of these games for, for healthcare or for clinical purposes? Have you had, had a chance to play with some of them? Yeah, we have. And, you know, uh, coming from the mobile background, gaming and gaming tools used in mobile apps are, you know, very prevalent. I mean, I, I can't think of very many apps that don't, uh, you know, include any type of gaming features. Uh, you know, Foursquare, if you check in certain places, you can become the mayor of things, mm -hmm. things like that, you know. Those it are, is fun. It like, is fun. It, yeah. It's, it's kind of cool, you know. There, there's no, People brag about it. Yeah, there's no, <laughs> I'm like, the mayor. <laughs> there's no real value there, but it's just intrinsic, and you can't, uh, you can't put a price on intrinsic value, so I think that's the great thing about the gaming portion of it and we are we have explored it um, internally on our side and, and it's something that we are looking to develop once we really flesh out uh, our clinical data so all this taken into consideration all the other stuff out there um, you, know, you mentioned mobile applications and we talked about we what, what do you think makes kinesio so much better than everything else that's out there Again, yeah, to reiterate or sound like a broken record, I think since our focus is on the clinical side, I think that's where we have a distinct advantage. Working with physical therapists, working with orthopedic surgeons to create a tool that they could use to supplement their time. Right. Um, I think that's where our distinct advantage is. I'm sure the other programs out there that are consumer focused have had support from physical therapists and, and orthopedic surgeons but it's still focused on the consumer and the patient in their own home on their own time. Um, so, you know, really honing in on what can we do to increase, you know, your practices, uh, patient outcomes, increase, you know, your practice revenues. I think that's where our, our big distinct advantage is. What does the future look like for you guys? I mean, this, this could be the start of something huge, you know, like it could start with Connect and it could go in any number of directions based on what the market wants from you. I mean, so if you look down the road 12, 24 months from now, what does that look like? So I think the the biggest wild card right now was the new Connect, which is scheduled to come out, I believe they said around mid-November. Um, we should be getting the first release of their developer specs uh, kit uh, probably the end of this month, beginning of next month. And that we're really excited about. Um, the current Connect is really good, and, and it accomplishes everything we we want it to. But the 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 Connect One is going to be phenomenal. Its its sensors are amazing. Um, it can track multiple people in a single sensor. Um, it's got I think you know ten times more sensor strength and things like that. So we're really excited about what we can do even beyond just the physical therapy and you know range of motion side so it's something that we're really excited about and i think the future like you said is wide open i mean there's tons of opportunities to bring you know clinical clinically proven data to the connect space which is something that i think it really has has been out missed out on you know something we haven't brought up yet and i know we've talked about it here during the program is the non-compliance issue for patients yes and you know, I know that's something that you're really after as well. So yes. talk to that a little bit. So physical therapy has probably um, one of the worst compliance rates for people um, complying with their exercises. 
the number fluctuates, but generally it's around 70 to 75% non-compliant. So that's like me, the PT tells you, these are the things you have to do and you go home and you know, don't ever do them. Correct. Okay. And it's like taking a test and you scoring a 25 on it. Uh -huh. um, so, I mean, that's, that's way below failing. And I think a lot of the issues with that, you know, there's been a lot of studies and um, the three main causes, you know, are, are barriers. You know, it could be time, life, kids, things like that. Um, the second major is that it's boring. You know, physical therapy by, by default, I guess, is not an exciting thing to happen. And then the last one is the motivation or the lack of, the, the feel of the lack of support. So we try to, we're trying to take, remove all of those barriers by having that real-time feedback so you know you're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. Flashing up a, hey, your first set's done, good job. Boom, nice work. Nice work. <laughs> um, High five. Removing the, the time constraints, you know, you utilizing our system, you don't need a physical therapist to be monitoring you full time. So you can set up, you know, a 30-minute session on your own schedule. And, and really get in there and do that. And then the, the removing the boring side of things by you know, adding those gamification aspects. Um, you know, you're seeing the exercises, you're getting that real feedback, and you're feeling better. And I think that's the ultimate goal. You know, you guys have been, I mean, how long have you guys been at this now? When, when was the original concept for this thought up? Um, so we built the first proof of concept around January. And um, then from there, we, focused on the range of motion side and then originally we built it to just capture uh, two ranges of motion. After we did that then we you know replicated that through 32 ranges of motion and so that's where we are right now. We have that fully complete and we are making the UI a bit sexier and our uh, goal is to be showcasing live at Parker Chiropractic College's uh, national event in Las Vegas in January. All right, so we'll, we'll be showing off uh, the range of motion, and then in the meantime, we're building in the physical therapy. That was my question: just do we have PTs that are using this at this point? Yet? Not at this point. Okay. Um, we have some beta sites uh, that have expressed a lot of interest, and we're working with them to bring in the exercises and make sure the monitoring is accurate. I think that's the most important part of anything clinical is that it needs to be accurate and that's what we're uh, in, in the process of doing at this time. You know, uh, we continue to chat about just how big of a change this the whole healthcare system is going through right now. Um, you know, and it's easy, it's, it's also easy to see like all these incredible innovations like, you know, why would they not use this, right? It seems so easy, like it's a game to help people get better, like why would they not use it? But it's not always that simple, right? Like, so what do you see as the biggest challenge to get PTs to, to do this and to get patients to do this? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And I think it's uh, the everlasting question. <laughs> yeah, we, all, the, we all face it, you, right? You, you, you face it, you figure out an answer, and then a week later you have a different answer. And I think that's the beauty of, you know, the entrepreneurial side of things is that it's such a, a fierce competitive arena. But, you know, I think, you know, apart from the, the clinical side of things and focusing on that, I think the technology aspect has a great allure. I think people are driven to, to things that are really cool and bright and colorful and, you know, uh, technology provides that. And I think when, a, as a, you know, me as a patient, if I walk into a doctor's office and they hand me an iPad to do my, you know, patient onboarding stuff, I feel a lot better because these guys are, you know, they're uh -huh. electronic, they're, the records are there, um, you know, they get technology and what it can do to increase their, their practice's productivity. And as a patient, if a, if a doctor or a physical therapy office said, hey, try our uh, Connect Physical Therapy Partners uh, application, and I was like, whoa, a Connect, That's, I, I have that for Michael Jackson's dance game, you know, I didn't know I could do that for, uh, My for, PT. for, for PT, um, so I think that is, uh, you know, just uh, the wow factor is, is there, and then I think the ultimate goal for any practice is to bring on new patients, create more revenue, and then have healthier, happier patients, and we're allowing that to happen. But the challenge is, is just getting them to grab it and yes. actually test it out, try yes. it, and um, run with it. Some people are just old-fashioned. Yeah, know? no, healthcare has the stigma for being, you know, a super advanced um, group of people, and they are. I mean, the, the, the people are, are dying of, of common diseases and rare diseases less and less. You know, we can address things so much better, but from a technology aspect, um, they are... I don't want to say they're the last, but they're far behind in, mm. in really grasping that technology. And I think with, you know, in the next 10 years, that should, the, the paradigm is already changing, but in the next 10 years, 
I think is really where we'll see, you know, that big shift just because of the generational gaps. Um, you know, I think in mobile health in particular, if you're looking at the mobile, the healthcare landscape um, as a 100-yard football field, you know, the, the mobile aspect, we're only on the two or three yard line. We got a ways to go. We've got a ways mm -hmm. to go and there's so much room to grow. I, I equate the mobile health industry as to like a child prodigy. You know, it's very young, but it's doing amazing things right now. That's a good, just, yeah, cool. Just, just go ahead and put it. Just <laughs> wait until, you know, he's he's 10. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's only a few years old and he's, he's already, you know, smarter and more capable of doing things than we could ever imagine, but just wait. Sure. Now, for just a second, put the technology aspect of your passion and your life on the shelf and just think as a patient here, you know, knowing everything that's changing, we just talked about it with healthcare, with just the way the system works. What are you most excited about? Again, not about, it doesn't do about technology, just in general in healthcare. What are you really excited to see happening right now and over the next five years? I think uh, one thing that's really exciting is a lot of the onus is being transferred to the person to really take care of themselves and really empower themselves to be healthier. And I think the trends now are starting to, to shift in that direction. You know, uh, there's gyms everywhere. People are outside. People are e making conscious decisions to eat better. Um, so I think that empowerment, and it, it'll, it empowers people. You know, you step on the scale, you lose five pounds, you're excited. All that work you've done is, is showing the results and I think that's the most exciting thing is that people now are really starting to embrace that change and, totally. and, and empower themselves. Yeah, and you know, and as that happens, all the businesses, all the services out there, you have to, I mean, if the consumers are demanding better, they have to be better. You know? So we keep talking about that big technology gap, you know, the more empowered I feel like patients become, the more they want to use technology that just puts more and more pressure on those that aren't using it to step up and actually yeah. meet them halfway. Absolutely. You know? So while it does kind of suck at times now that they're so behind, we're moving in the right direction, like you said. Yeah. So uh, wrapping up here, I mean, so uh, and you can answer this either from the perspective of a patient or just an entrepreneur. I mean, what advice do you have for people out there as they work to navigate just pain points of the system? You know, just, I know we talked about empowered patients and things like that, but if, where, where can they get started? What, what advice do you have there? So from an entrepreneurial standpoint, I would say, you know, follow your passions. Um, don't let anyone tell you that something can't be done. If there's a problem and you have a solution, then you have the start. You're, you're way ahead of half the game, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I think people think too big picture and, and think about, you know, being bought out by this big company. I mean, you got to stay focused on what you're doing and focus on the problem and your solution. So I think that would be my best advice to the entrepreneur community and to the you know, consumer markets, to the patients out there. Uh, just get, get excited. Um, healthcare in particular is experiencing this, this great paradigm shift in how things are accomplished. And I think it's something that's really gonna benefit everyone going forward. Totally. All right, well, this is awesome. I mean, I'll post all of uh, Nick's information on the episode uh, page here. Um, you can check out his mobile application company, Synapse Labs. And coming soon here, I think we're going to have a bunch more stuff online about Kinesio Connect. I think it's just probably the basics at this point. Yeah. But uh, really excited to see this come to market and uh, all the cool results coming up here in the next few months. So Thanks, best man. of luck with everything. I appreciate it. Look forward to finishing out Health Wildcatters with you guys. Boom. And that does it for me and Nick today. Thanks so much for stopping by to, to check out the episode and, and hear his story. Very excited for all the work that they're doing. They're going to make a huge impact on how we deliver physical therapy and how we make sure that patients are compliant with what they're supposed to be doing so that they actually get better. Uh, before we sign off, of course, I want to remind you guys, please subscribe if you haven't already. Go to healthsparks.com forward slash subscribe to make sure you get all the episodes delivered straight to you. Coming up next week, uh, Nicole Pardo is the founder of a company called Remind Technologies. They've de designed a pill box for your iPhone or for your Android device to distribute your pills and make sure you're compliant with your medication. So uh, very exciting stuff. Want to make sure you get the content, so be sure to subscribe. Uh, I think that's all for this week. Really looking forward to next week. Uh, very excited to be back doing this. So until then, I'm your host, Michael Walsh. We will talk to you soon.